Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from the Govardhan Eco Village in Maharashtra, India. This is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast. With your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kev Stubadas. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to the GEV. An incredible transcendental replication of being in Vrindavan in Maharashtra, isn't it? All the temples of Vrindavan are here. Not all of them. The main ones. The main, like, seven temples of Vrindavan are here. Right? Radha, Radha Raman, Radha Damodar. They've even got a little Bunky Bihari monument. Radha Gokulananda, Radha Govinda, an exact, exact replica of the Madan Mohan Temple sandstone. That is the, probably the most impressive thing. It's incredible here. It sure is, Raghunath. You know, and we're winding down our uh, trainings here. It's all like sort of ending. People are getting sort of, you know, you get a little excited, like, okay, what's next in my life? But everybody's a little sad. The 300-hour people have really bonded together, and the wisdom training people against them no they're good <laughs> friends they've all bonded they've all bonded we're gonna have a wrestling match later may the best training win <laughs> and we've been like you know what we've been doing this week we've just been picking out interesting people picking their brain telling their story we got a great guest today too my faithful friend and assistant for all these years Janeshwar Prabhu is gonna tell his story yesterday was a tearjerker it had uh, curves and hooks and highlights and I cried I laughed I Fell in love when the Go- Sri Govinda told his story yesterday. It was, was like a tear jerker. It ever was a there was tear jerker, and then love at first sight, oh, yeah, which you know I never things. believe in, but it actually happened. But you know, it was it was great. If you missed yesterday's show, check it out with Sri Govinda. Did you give it a special title? Yeah, it was called "Grief, Love, and Service on the Path of Bhakti." Hmm. Oh, it's nice. That's nice. So, um, Mara, any announcements for you? Yes, I do. Um, let's see. Bhakti recovery group meetings at 1 and 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. There's also a Bhakti recovery group recovery retreat coming up in the U.K. March 30th till April 2nd. And if you're interested in that, you can go to bhaktirecoverygroup.com for details. And then um, our show time is 6.30 a.m. Except for Friday, we're going to be on at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. Because we're all traveling to Mumbai. 8.30 this Friday. We're all going to Mumbai. But we're going to do the show anyway. It's crazy, hectic travel day, graduation. And we're doing the show anyway. We're going to go to Mumbai. We're going to sit Mum- Mumbai. Like that? Mumbai. It's a mix between Bombay. And we're doing the show anyway. And um, you said Italy. You mentioned Italy. Italy retreat's happening. If you haven't signed up, it's a great way to see Italy. You know, after you get into Bhakti, nothing's the same anymore. Vacations sort of seem flat, you know, it's sort of like you want something a little bit more substantial. We've made bhakti fun. I think that's our, our, our claim to fame. Bhakti's fun. It's a fun thing. We eat well, we dance around, we meet great people. It's high vibe consciousness. We do exciting things. I think it's a good. Clayton's here. Clayton's having a great time. Clayton here, dragged here by his wife. And I think he likes it more than his wife likes it now. He's a firefighter from Alaska, showed up. She's like, hey, you know, my, my husband hurt his hand. He can't work. 
I think he's going to come out here. My, in my mind, I was like, oh, no. This is going to be bad. He shows up. The guy's great. He's having a great time of his life. It's fun. Baki's fun. Right? It should be fun. It's, it, it's spiritual life. Spiritual life should be fun. It's the nature of the soul. So we do this uh, trip in Italy. It's fun. It's beautiful. It's Italy. There's great food. There's great people. We go to beautiful places. We, you know, we, we go to the sea. You know, we swim. We stay in a beautiful castle, temple, you know, Tuscan rolling hills. What more can be said? Yeah. Awesome. We have classes, podcasts, live. Check that out. Uh, uh, go to wisdomofthesages.com and check out our Italy retreat or email W-O-T-S, Italy at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you for being you. Now, on to the show. A special guest today, and this guy is uh, you know, quite a – I met him randomly. I met him randomly, and he helped me out as our drummer because we needed a drummer one year, real bad, real quick, emergency. And I tell you, I fell in love with him. I fell in love with him. And we become good friends. He assists me. He's traveled all over India with me, all over Nepal with me. Um, not only an incredible drummer, incredible artist, incredible photographer, incredible videographer, um, incredible. He speaks many, many different languages. And he's just got sort of an interesting story about how he built his life through Bhakti. And it started off in the most like unlikely of ways, like in the ghetto slash slums of Mumbai. And um, he's he just, you know, he's just like honest enough to admit where he came from and he takes no credit. He's always giving credit. He's a sweet example of a devotee. And I just really enjoy his company. We've also traveled around Europe together and done programs around Europe together. And I just love his company. And when I thought he couldn't get any better than he is, he got married to an incredibly wonderful lady today, Maya Pureshri. And now she's just part of the whole team now, too. And she's ultra talented, ultra qualified, sings, plays musical instruments, does incredible dancing. She's going to dance at our closing ceremony. I don't know if I forgot to tell her that, but you're dancing at the closing, by the way. And uh, maybe on the show today. too. Yeah, you might even dance on the show today. So get ready. Get those ankle bells on. Just realizing we're going to sit here. Tell me. If you're Johnny Quest, then Janeshra is Haji. I, I don't know who Johnny Quest is. I missed that. Really? I thought you. I thought all these cartoons you knew. You Johnny know, Quest. I don't remember. No. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's. He was like. I think it was. I think even in India. Haji. It sounds sort of Indian. Indian. And, uh, <laughs> or something. Well, I think it was Muslim. I think he was Muslim, but he was kind of like the local that you know. He was his friend from the local place, and they run around on adventures in India. All right. Well, that's me. That's me and he. That's me and he. Welcome, Janeshwar. Harry Ball. Krishna. We love him. Everybody loves him here. <laughs> Yeah, they, you know, a few people can see you on YouTube and Zoom, but most people will hear Janesh Rush. So you got to speak into that microphone. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, really close. So why don't you tell your story from the very beginning, how you grew up, what it was like where you grew up, what was your family like, what were your neighbors like and stuff like that. Talk slow so everybody can hear you and, um, uh, and, and pick up, although your English is pretty damn perfect too. What was it like? Well, I mean, where did you grow up? Can you explain what the what 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 that was like? We're a bunch of Americans. Mm -hmm. We don't know anything. Grew up in Bombay, Juhu. Um, I think uh, closest helicopter, like there's a station for air, airport near the airport. It's really na it's this nasty. Um, well, we were kids. We could like you know sometimes we would climb on the walls to see a helicopter like or we would see a plane flying would like look at the planes and so you know. like in other words you grew up in in one of the slums in yeah. one slum yeah uh, villages you could say yeah. or towns in mumbai yeah so like if you see a film like uh slum dog millionaire yeah or something like that's, that's exactly like, same that's exactly yeah so if you haven't seen slum dog millionaire it is just like <laughs> in camp tent cities encampments yeah where it's actually functioning like a city is that correct yeah like and uh, you don't have you don't have bath bathrooms in your place. Um, your house would be probably like, um, I don't know how to call it, like Arp. maybe five feet or six feet, sometimes like 10, 15 feet long, uh, not longer than that. 
if you're a little rich, you can have, uh, you know, like a longer or maybe a square piece. Um, but we all live in Chol. So Chol system is like you have houses in a small lane. So like opposite, like, you know, you have houses opposite sides and then you don't have bathrooms. Uh, we live very close. Like it's what's, really a, what's a Chol? You mentioned this word. Yeah. So Chol is like you have two houses. Like, for example, ha- uh, a little plot. Oh. No, no, it's like just rooms against each other. Like, right. you know, if room you walk, next to room, next to room, next to room like that. Uh, well, you have one chawl so then uh, you have a door another door in front and then there is another chawl so then um like apartments close. like a, are these apartments or like tents well basically you could you can say like a tent but then uh, if you are uh, if you have little money you can build it with concrete and have like a double yeah. floor or triple floor but not m- more than that now do you own these or the government does well, looks the other way or the government father, sets them up my father bought it when he was when he came to like because he grew up i mean he was he's from bihar he's from village so when he was little um his father like kind of kicked him out from the house to make money and also he didn't want it to be there so he he traveled like many places like kolkata and all those cities he stayed he was like probably 10 15 years old he was working and then uh, to make money he came to Bombay and then, of course, he got married and then he bought a house um, that we still live in. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I don't live, but my my father, uh, my, bro- my brother and my mother, she still still is there. This is in these slums, ch- yeah. Charles, in these yeah, slums. Yeah, Charles, yeah. So um, now, does the is it just a free for all? Are you? No. It's actually land that you can purchase. It's not free. <laughs> not really. And it's expensive. Oh, you can actually purchase it though. Yeah, yeah. It's even expensive. Um, it's expensive to buy now, but my father probably got it like very, really like, well, uh, wow. old time. So we still have it. And I always tell my brother, why don't you just sell it and like, you know, buy a better apartment somewhere. He doesn't, he's like, no, I don't, I, I can't. It's like, he's attached to it as well. Now within these but, slums, there's stores or shops or, you know, yeah, there is stores and shops. <laughs> Unbelievable. And, and and where where's the there's there's no sanitation, no toilets, no. Where does that happen? Uh, you can have a hole in your house, like in the corner, for peeing, and bathing. Wow. And if you wanna go, like you want, if you wanna go toilet in the mornings, you have to, uh, you have to carry like a you know those uh, oil bottle, oil can. <laughs> yeah, oil cans. So you cut it on the top. And then you fill it up with water and you take it with, or you can like, you know, have a something, but generally people carry those things. And then (laughs) you have like 10 toilets. And then in each toilet, 10 person have like queue. So if you come early morning, like five o'clock, you stand in the queue. Mm. So you have in one toilet, you have five people standing with their bottle there. And that's their queuing system. Wow. Uh, and you have to wait when your line comes. You know, it's so good to hear this because we live in one paradigm of what we think is reality, yeah. especially growing in the West. And we forget what parts of the world are facing and we take things for granted and we become very entitled. And when you hear this, and the, another interesting side to this, although we might have our own toilet, and I got four toilets in my house, you know, and, and it works, and it's got our own septic system. We pump the septic system, and then when it gets dirty, the guy comes in with Lysol and cleans that thing out. And although we have that, I got a feeling that these slums also have community, fresh food. Um, I don't know. Is there like a spiritual community in the slum? No, there. There's not. Okay, yeah. forget it. I stand corrected. I mean, <laughs> I stand. I mean um. The, the one I told you, like, you can stand in the queue. That's a better facility for toilet. Okay. So you have more privacy. Like, you can have concrete walls, which is, like, I don't know how to say it. Like, one, two, maybe, like, three feet. Wow. <laughs> that much space you have. So that's the better facility. It's concrete. The, you know, somebody is cleaning there. But if you go for, like, really cheap one, it's, like, it's made of wood. Hmm. <laughs> and there is switch all under and you have two plies <laughs> yep. so if you 
<laughs> you could fall in. Sometimes you, sometimes like sounds it, like it's happened. Yeah, it has happened. Like people, <laughs> like they, like it's normal. Like people get drunk, they want to use washroom, they slip, they fall in there, and Actually, it's nasty. It's really nasty. I, like, is there anything good about those slums? I mean, is there a sense of community or a sense of, you know, friendship or? It's just um, people uh, can't afford. People can't afford like apartments. Right. And nowadays, like, okay, government is like, okay, we'll break this slum and we'll give you a better place, which they promise they will give you. But then uh, sometimes they don't give you and you are out on the streets. Right. And uh, Because and sometimes the you, slums are in very, ex they turn out to be expensive neighborhoods eventually. Yeah, become yeah. So like the place where we stay, it's right next to the airport. So if... In future, we don't know. Maybe after they can build a hotel there or something like that. Sure, it's not right next to the like you know air, uh, like you know airport or uh, Chhatrapati Shivji Chhatrapati yeah, yeah, yeah. International yeah. Airport. Not not the airport. Actually, it's like a helicopter, like a okay. I don't know, like a helicopter uh, landing pad. Yeah, yeah, Full but pad. it's shut down. It's it's not even active anymore. You know, but if in future they try to expand it, they'll break that, and we don't know if they will give you a place. I mean, mm. we, like my father owned that place. So we maybe will get, if people don't own it, if they don't have proper papers, they'll probably get kicked out. And All right. So it seems like, now were your parents spiritual people? Yeah, they were. My father, he saw his spiritual master only twice in his life. And uh, he, of course, he took Shiksha and he took, in, he took initiation. Krishna Bhakta? Yes, he was initiated in Gaudiya Oh, wow. And, uh, Gaudiya Math means uh, Prabhupada's gurus. Uh, God, uh, Prabhupada's gurus had uh, Prabhupada had God brothers, and they call that the Gaudiya Math, yeah. the, the, the descendants of Bhakti Siddhanta. Oh, it means like a Hare Krishna devotee. Yeah, and they what they would they would go they would travel like different villages and they would preach. So my father was one of them who was preached by uh, this particular sannyasi. And then he took initiation, of course, and then uh, he was practicing bhakti. So that's where your background with Gaudi Vaishnavism begins. Well, um, I never, when I was 10, 11, 12, I really never realized like they were devotees. I always thought like, okay, they're just my parents. My mother, she was initiated by a Ramanandi Babaji. Ramanandi is a sampradaya. It's also Vaishnav sampradaya. But as Krishna, Krishna Bhaktas, they, we think Krishna is Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ramanandis are, they think Lord Ramachandra has a, there is no philosophy that doesn't have any, just Lord Ramachandra is superior and, you know, above all. And they have also like, um, like, a, uh, like how Krishna Bhaktas have Vrindavan, Ramachandra has pastime like Chitrakut, all those other places. And they have many pastimes and it's mm. amazing. Yeah, I love them. All right, so they were they said they were married. It was a good. It was a religious marriage, but and they didn't imp, at least verbally impart that to you because you didn't even know about it. Yeah, like they my never... kids, my kids know that we're devotees because we stand out from the rest. Don't eat meat. Don't eat. Don't 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 do this. Yeah, they never. They never like. I I'm actually grateful that my parents never forced me to do anything because if would have done it, I I was very rebellious. So I would have gone up like other way. Right. And what what I when I was growing up, my they put uh, uh, like some scars in me, like how to respect your family, how to respect your parents. And like I, I, I would remember I would go to school, come back. If I'm going to school, I would touch my father and my mother's feet before going to school. After I wake up, um, we would it was just naturally it was in us. My parents never told me, like, wake up and touch my feet. Or like that, and it was just naturally. I was, I would they they would tell us a lot of pastimes. Like my mom, I remember she used to read to us like a she would have this Ramayan and she would read it out to us and tell us all these pastimes. And Lord Ramachandra used to do these things. So through that, like in a subtle way, they used to educate us. Mm -hmm. And then as I grew up, um, I was like, I remember like. I mean, of course, I used to take. I when I was growing up, I was I, I also eat meat. in In my house, we never cooked because you know my parents were devotees; they wouldn't allow me. But uh, my aunt, she used to live like you know a few chals away, and then if we used to go on Sundays to see her, or so she would cook and she would feed us. And my parents were completely okay with that. Hmm. But I remember uh, eating. I mean, I'm just being honest, like what I Please. felt. Um, so I remember I was what 
uh, 12 or 13 um and like uh, um i was eating fish uh, like a small portion i put it in my mouth and i had that disgust in my mouth um i can never forget it and it gave me kind of like realization like what am i doing with my life mm. why why am i doing this like what what is this there is something better than just this and my first thing was like um i need to stop should i leave it no i'm just saying your hands and your face so when the camera oh sorry you just got to tighten that yeah. microphone yeah. Yeah. yeah okay i i'll i won't touch it it's okay sorry it'll be it's fine yeah so yeah I, so i i was eating and i felt that disgust and that was kind of like a point for me that and of course my mom my mom was like i could see that she was slowly giving me krishna consciousness like she got it uh, somehow other by krishna's mercy she saw some devotees from the temple and they invited her to make garlands in the temple mm-hmm. so she used to go and do service there she really loved it she still does it at, i mean of juhu course at the juhu temple yeah at the juhu temple wow. ras bihari temple and uh, so she would bring prasadam and in small amount of prasadam as i was taking i was very attracted to it and i saw that purification going through me and i was just separating myself from like like from everything like i started leaving home i used to just for my mangal aarti i used to sleep, sleep on the streets my mom doesn't know i mean I'm don't sure tell her doesn't. i won't tell her yeah yeah please don't how yeah. old were you now <laughs> well when i used to do that yeah probably 12 or 13 something so for mangal aarti because i was under 18 so i i was not allowed to stay in the temple and that means the very early services in the temple like 4:30 a.m. or yeah so mangal aarti is like the first aarti and my mom told me that uh if you if any devotee watches mangal aarti every day they're very dear to krishna so i don't know i i was just i just wanted to do it mm. so i remember like i wouldn't tell my mom that i'm Uh, I I would just say I'm staying in the temple but of course they would kick me out. Uh they had cameras everywhere and uh, um then I started staying on in the lift. Uh, I would stay in, up in in the elevator? Elevator, yeah. You would stay in the elevator. Elevator, yeah. Because at night nobody uses the elevator. And uh then I would just chant my rounds or then sometimes security guards will come and they'll be like what are you doing here? I would just say I'm going to the hall, one of the hall I would just mention. Sometimes I would calculate the time and what time they close the door so there is a like a stairs to some hall like in the temple mm. so they would close it and they will open it right before the mangal aarti so mm. i would go before they close it so i'm inside there and i would just be in the dark stairs for a whole night i would have like a small mp4 i would what like i would put like a little krishna in there i would watch whole night stay up and then morning they will open it i'll go and see mangal aarti so you had some faith probably <laughs> implanted from your from your parents that this is a good thing. Yeah, and I my, mean you could have been doing anything. Uh, yeah. God knows what your neighbor kids I mean, I mean they were, were the all into mess. Doing? They were all into mess. Drugs. They used to sell like um I was selling wine also when I was little. When you were little. I mean no not, not little but like just before coming to Krishna consciousness. I remember I had a friend who was like, "Oh, we should do this and it's fun. You will get extra money." And then uh Where did you get the like, wine from? Extra money was just 10 rupees. That was my wage, like right. 10 rupees and uh So he was like, "Oh, we, I work for this lady. She gives me new watch and she gives me gifts." So I entered this room and this lady, elderly lady, she has like a plate of wine and like all kind of like it was weird, like, you know, everybody's smoking there, they're drunk. Basically our service was like we just serve these people who are coming there and if she's happy with your service, she will give you 10 rupees. or like some money or something to eat huh. my parents doesn't know anything about this <laughs> and uh, and i started doing like i used to do like i started selling newspaper um i used to wake up five o'clock tell my mom i'm going to jog or like doing some healthy oh, i wouldn't i would just go sell newspaper and stay whole day they will give me 10 rupees and then come back and then i would collect that money i i didn't know what to, i wasn't a spend thrift so i would just collect that money and then i started i i didn't like that newspaper so i started t- selling tea then i used to cut fruit 
I was to sell ice it's cream. Hot. You know, part of this sounds horrible, and part of it sounds like you know, good. It, good. it was fun. It you was learn, fun. You know what I, because yeah, I, I like. I think my kids need like a work ethic. Because I not because when I started working for different people, a different like you know places, I felt like now in the world I can go anywhere out and I can work for anything. Sure. I won't feel like <clears throat> like you know, like I oh I'm disgusted or anything like that. So I used to sell tea. Uh, the the rickshaw guys they would come. We had to serve them. Then uh, then at, sometimes I do. I used to do two shifts. So I would sell tea. Then once I finish that, at night I would do the you know the uh, like you know ice cream I used to sell. And he used to let me take one ice cream home and ten rupees. Mm. And uh, so I so I remember I used to do this one. I used to work at the Chinese store. And uh, we had to like you know cut meat and bring shop and all those. I had a Bengali kid, and uh, he taught me how to steal, <laughs> and uh, you know you, when you're growing up in slum, you can yeah you your friends are not like you know let's go to church or let's go to temple or let's read book. You're yeah. completely against everything. You want to do everything. Like I was also like fixing rickshaws. You know, it's a very messy job. Your cloth gets black, and you put it on again, and you do that again. Once you're in it, you don't feel like you know. But yeah. But then I I upgrade I always I don't know I was I always felt like Krishna was always helping me to upgrade like I always mm. upgraded myself even when I was doing jobs like I upgraded to I was a medical delivery you know boy and uh, pe- uh, like my coworkers were jealous of me because I was like I was a little you know young and cute so I used to get a lot of tip uh, mm. and I used to go to celebrities' house. And you won't believe it. Uh, you know, is a, a Hindu, uh, Indian Bollywood star Govinda. Yeah. His wife wanted to adopt me. Ooh, would have been a whole different future for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have been Krishna conscious, but I mean, I, I'm happy that I chose this than that. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> would have been so she, cool. She she really wanted to adopt me, and she was like, "I will speak to your family because you were like doing this." And maybe you can just stay with us and I'll take care of you. I'll take care of your education. You will stay here with us and, you know, you can travel with us. And I was like, no. Wow. But then uh, I remember when I was leaving the job, my boss uh, somehow other called her and said that, hey, you're, the boy is leaving. And she called me late night, like 10 o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock. She was like, before he goes, can you send it to my place? And I remember she gave me like two bags of brand new clothes Mm. like jeans and shirts and all fancy stuff Sweet. and she gave me like 2000 rupees that was more than what the medical uh, would you ever uh, made? you know would give me i mean he didn't give me salaries none of these places they would give me salary they would be like you uh, you won't get salary and i was just like then why am i working they would like call your parents i'll give them because they were like afraid i don't know but yeah they gave me where was school in this picture is it expected that kids growing up in the slums have to go to school we did go i was in i was my parents were like they put me in a private english medium school that's how i can read and write and speak yeah. and uh yeah it was tough though because cuz you weren't my, interested cuz you had a my, full-time job no i used to jo- i used to work only like on my summer vacations okay or like when you when i used to get holidays like that yeah, i wouldn't work or like work when i'm studying or here's the million dollar question at one point and this is sort of how we all ended up here is at one point some vaishnava some devotee must have extended a hand to you and take, given you some shelter. Who was that in your life? It was one monk, actually. He's still a monk. He's probably, he's wants to, he wants to take sannyas. He's a youth preacher and I, I was underage and he really saw good in me and like, he really like, uh, like, I don't know how you say, like sharpened my, like, uh, you know, he sharpened me. He said that you're good in arts, so you should focus in arts. Whatever you are good in, uh, put your energy into it. And mm. I said, I hate studies. So it's like, okay, you don't have to study. So I, I, what do you call, uh, I failed the 10th grade purposefully. And I was in the temple. I was playing cartels. My teachers, they picked me up from the temple. <laughs> they were like, they're like 10th grade as, 
exam. It's like one of the main exam and like, what the hell are you doing here in, in the temple? Because they knew I, because that time I was already becoming more towards Krishna consciousness. I started having Shika, I used to put Tilak on in the school when all the kids were like, what? Like, they were just like, what the heck is, and I would, yeah. And then my principal, I remember, because I was a good, I was a good student. I used to, I used to like, you know, get like, say, I was a ranker. Like, you know, you get like three, four second rank. My principal, she was crying. She was a Christian. She was crying and she, in front of me, in my parents, she was like, what did those Hare Krishna guys did to you? Like, what did they feed you? Like, why are you like so detached from all these things? I was like, I just don't want to study anymore because I feel like everybody's studying. All my friends are studying. They're going to go to college. They're going to get married. They Like, I don't want to f just, you know, do that whole circle of like, you know, I want to do something different. Like, you know, they didn't understand me. And when I failed the, gr when I failed the 10th grade, um, my, my guardian, like my teacher that I mentioned you. The monk. Yeah. He said, you're a good, uh, good artist. So you should do graphic designing. So I, he, some other, uh, you know, collected the funds for me to become a graphic designer. And then I was doing voluntary service for a t temple. Mm. I used to design and all. I finished the course and then I was flying to Mayapur because I said, I don't want to study in a school like normal school. And then because I failed in three subjects, so my teacher called me and they were like, look, you failed in three subjects. That's not a problem. You can give them, you just come to school, you reform it, and then you, know, you can give the exams again and we can pass you. And then, you know, they actually wanted to even cheat. They wanted me to cheat. They said answers are in the back of the question paper. You just have to copy it. I was like, it doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. I was like, why would you help me to cheat? Mm -hmm. You know? And, uh, but yeah, I, like I, I, because I was that day, I was taking a flight to Mayapur. So and, you, uh, you decided to, how, what, how did you end up getting going? So you ended up going to the Mayapur Guru Kul at age 14, 16, 16, 16. Yeah. And, uh, if you're unfamiliar with that, it's like a traditional, almost like you're walking back in the pages of time. Yeah. These like earthen buildings, yeah. you know, um, with, you know, a bunch of children. It's like a boarding school, a boys boarding school. Yeah. There's like cows, elephants, you learn munch. It's one sense you learn a lot like ancient things, nothing. I don't know if you learn practical things of the modern world, but you yeah. learn like study of the ancient Puranas, you study Sanskrit. Matter of fact, uh, I think it was you that told me, or Veda Sar told me, like, you just, they start te speaking in Sanskrit. You have to learn Sanskrit just yeah. to ask for food and stuff yeah. like that. So everybody learns Sanskrit. Yeah. You grow up in a traditional way with your outdoor bucket showers. It's like you're living 700 years ago or 1,000 yeah. years ago. Yeah. They take care of an <laughs> elephant. You know what I mean? They have their own elephant. Yeah, we had to get up 2 o'clock in the morning. Get up at two o'clock in the morning, go to bed early. You learn how to cook. You learn how to musical instruments. Yeah. You learn language. You learn culture. You want to share a little bit about that? And how did you get there? Your monk advisor sent you there? Well, when I when I got that like you know strong attachment like you know towards Krishna towards the temple, I started like dropping off everything. Like I literally have no contact with my school friends. Um, I started running away to holy places without my parents knowing I would, I didn't have money to buy tickets. So I would just have a school uniform and I would just take my bag with some clothes and I would travel. I traveled to Pandarpur. I didn't have internet. I didn't have phone. That's a long way. Yeah. It's a long way. Yeah. Um, and I got on a train. I had no tickets. I went to Pandarpur. <laughs> uh, we crossed the river. We went there. We, did the whole, like you know, 10 hours away or eight hours away or something like that? Or? I don't remember, but it was long yeah. because back in the days, there was no Google search. Like, uh, you know, you had to that, just figure it out back then. Yeah. Like if you need Internet, you have to go to cafe back. We didn't have phones or anything. I had to ask. I had to communicate. And um, I was good at that. So, <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, I remember it was my mom. I clearly remember my mom. She was my first guru. Like my father. He was just doing his thing and I just, I was just looking up to him like, you know, and my parents went, as soon as they saw, like I was going in a good side, like, you know, I was becoming attached to temple, Krishna and chanting. My mom's like, no, you like generally the parents, they would be like, oh, chant one round at least. She told me 16 rounds. She was like, no, no, one, no two, 16 rounds minimum. <laughs> she didn't tell me what I should think of, what I should feel. 
And I felt like when I was chanting 16 rounds every day without fail, without knowing anything, um, Krishna is real. Like chanting, even if you don't know anything about it, chanting really helps. It can connect you with Guru and it connected me with my Guru, His Holiness Girat Swami. I, I don't know how I will ever meet him. Like I'd never had any contacts or anything, but just Krishna, just by chanting, um, it just... Yeah, he just helped me a lot. And I, and as you know, it's interesting, like, you know, in Nectar of Devotion, it says, you know, uh, you have to do association, you should take remnants of the devotees, you should serve the devotees, you should chant, you should go, you know, holy places. When I started chanting, I never read Bhagavad Gita before that. I never read Bhagavad Gita. I never read the first book that I uh, read was Harinam Chintamani by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Hmm. was to how to develop attachment for holy name and i saw all those things happening automatically without me even endeavoring for it so as i was like you know just normal kid going to school i would finish my school and come back in the same school uniform i would go to the temple and uh, i would go directly to the gbc kitchen where they would serve the sannyasis so i would help the cook to you know in the kitchen clean the dishes and then sometimes the cook will be like oh take this to the maharaj to a great devotee and i would serve them and then some remnants would come to me and i would eat it without knowing anything of this and all this benefit i was already seeing that it was helping me to grow my spiritual life mm. and i would just seeing that krishna was just i also wanted to run away like you know without my guardian knowing to mayapur and I was crazy. I was like, you know, I it's was a just, good type of crazy. Yeah. So, but like, I just didn't want it to be in slum doing with my friends, what they're doing, getting into drugs, smoking, and just going to parties. And I was just not into it. He's I never the drunk punk rock guy of the slums. He was like <laughs> rebelling. That, that was his rebellion. The straight edge guy of the slums. Yeah, he's the Krishna core guy of the slums. <laughs> so now Mumbai is on the West coast of India. Yeah. And the Mayapur Gurukul is basically, you know, just north of Calcutta, yeah. so it's on the east coast, far yeah. away. Was it was it the the monk that you knew in Mumbai that opened up the opportunity for you to go to the Mayapur Gurukul? Well, because I told him like I do not want to study, and he was like, "Oh, well, you're young. If you don't study, you're just like, what are you gonna do you in to life? Study you something. Know? You got to do something." And he saw that he saw something in me, and he just like pushed me towards what I like to do, and uh, that's what pretty much I did. Um, after that, like, um, but how did you get to the Guru Kula? He spawn. He, 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 he told me like, up. you're 16. Now I'll try to get sponsored for you for two years till you get 18. And then you have to figure out your own life. Okay. So, uh, he was like, literally he's a monk and he was going out and asking people for money for me. And he would like take videos of me and send it to sponsors. Like oh, this is what he's doing. That is sweet. That's the sweet heart of a devotee. And I can never. What I is his name? Never... Let's give it. Let's, let's name names here. Actually, my name Janeshwar is half of his name and half of Jananan Swami because I used to, I used to serve Jananan Swami and Praneshwar. So my name is Janeshwar. His name is Praneshwar. Yeah. His name is Praneshwar. Praneshwar. Okay. Praneshwar <laughs> Prabhu Hari Bol. <laughs> yeah. So, so then you went to my Gurukul, you began to learn different arts and learn to yeah, chant. Yeah, so uh, I, was, I wasn't into so much uh, mantra chanting and like, you know, because uh, I I was like, I wanted to do, because I was I was an artist, so I wanted to do more art and like, you know, but I liked it, that I liked it, that it, it was very good for me because it trained me how to be myself, like I not to be dependent on anything or anybody. Mm -hmm. So we had to wake up two o'clock, clean our spot we we focus in cleanliness a lot there so basically before you go into bed you have to have like a wet rag or a bucket and water so after you wake up you have to clean your hands because basically it, when you are sleeping you wake up you have like like you know from the like uh, mala like pour, from the pores of your body like dirt so comes out when you yeah. sleep so Basically, that's why you shower in the morning because you're contaminated. So the spot you're sleeping, that's contaminated. So anything you're touching, that's contaminated. So we had to like focus on cleanliness a lot. So we wake up two o'clock, we clean the spot, we go shower, we come, we get ready and then we ch start chanting rounds, uh, you know, till 3, 30, 4 o'clock. And then we go to temple and half of the group stays back and do the yagyas and all those other rituals that they used to do because we used to have a lot of shaligrams. Uh, and worship and puja, prana pratishta. They used to do all those things. Um, so yeah, that was our thing. And 
and you know cleaning washing clothes every day we used to have only two sets so you cannot have like you know a hamper <laughs> there was he saved lots of money on hampers <laughs> yeah so two sets of dhoti and uh, chadar and so you're you just, wearing one set and you're washing the other yeah, set and wearing that the next yeah day. so next and you have to wash them every day like you know and you have to wake up in winter you have to take cold showers there was no geyser or anything you have and there was like when venus days we used to have like maha cleaning so we would to focus in every like every corners every hut we had to clean it every stones in the gurukula we had to wash them and then put them back and like dry them there was a whole thing. it sounds to me like you had some guardian angel kind of looking over you your whole life <laughs> because you know you came through the slums which is, there's so many dangers yeah. for kids there yeah. you know yeah. like real real heavy dangers yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, even in the Mayapur Gurukula, which is in one sense beautiful, in another sense, you know, there's there's all kinds of abuse that took place there. But you mentioned to us that somehow you passed through that, yeah, safely somehow. Yeah, some other Krishna was always taking care of me, and I was, I was actually like you know because my my guardians, my teachers, my parents, they always put good some scars in me, so I always thought that I should give that. So like you know, little kids, I used to give yoga class to them, and then. I would give them long shavasana and I used to tell them like Ramayan stories and like some cute stories that would like, you know, help them to be better kids. And they all love me. Like as they grew up now, they still remember me and they still respect me as the, you the know. kids in the school in the Maya, in the Yeah, in the Mahapur Gurukul. Gurukul. Because I, I was good. Like, you know, I used to have one kid on my back and like one in the front and like I used to carry them to home because my service was like, after the school was over, some kids used to go back to with their parents. So I used to be like, you know, uh, an elder brother, take care of them, tell them stories. Sometimes if they're hungry, I used to like sneak some food from the kitchen for them so they can, they, they're not like starving or, so I used to like take care of them and like that. So how many years did you spend in the Gurukula? Three years like that, three years. Okay. And what did you gain from that? Like a lot to of use things, in life a lot of things moving forward. All good things actually, like, um everything like you know i like me living a simple life it's actually from gurukul i wouldn't know what to do other than that like cleanliness how to respect how to um you know be like you know how to be in the temple how to serve the deities how to do any spiritual activities cleanliness by taking care of yourself everything i like what i am now um other than just a photographer and traveling and music and all those things. An incredible musician, plays every instrument, including guitar, <laughs> cartels, cartel master, harmonia master, Murdunga powerhouse. Um, those all came from there. I bet you could cook pretty well too. Yeah, I, you can cook. I cook too. Yeah. How many languages do you speak? Like five to six. Five to six. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like what was so hard, I mean, because we got into this, you know, in our 20s. So therefore, it was like we had to unlearn a lot of stuff. We didn't know simple living. We knew complicated living. And for yeah. us to get simple, it was like, it was tough. It was a lot of like attachments we had to let go of, uh, um, you know, just cramming in a bunch of people in a room and taking cold showers and waking up early. Me and Kostuba have a famous story that we were driving across America. You know, most people drive across America even me today, we just drive and then you pull over, sleep in the car. But no, we have to have a morning program at 4 a.m. <laughs> so it's like, and of course you can't have a morning program unless you shower. So Estuba and me driving across America, we're like, well, where are we going to shower? It's like freezing out. It's we're in Texas. And so Estuba has got the bright idea. Let's pull over behind this Walmart. And so I don't know. How do you do that? You get carried a, carried like um milk jugs of water that were at this point freezing and we're out in behind the parking lot at whatever four in the morning it's still dark out and costuba goes first because i'm like think i'm gonna get out of it and he's doing his shower and he's already dried off and now it's like it's my turn i get the uh gumsha on i start pouring the freezing cold water over my freezing cold body my entire body is shaking i'm barefoot and all of a sudden, all these floodlights go on and it's like three squad cars and all these police, <laughs> police, police, what do you got in your hands? I was like, I I'm showering. 
It's like, what? And then I, I was so cold, I had to put my shoes on. My legs were like rattling. So I reach for my shoes. And that's when they all drew their guns at me. I was like, it's a shoe. It's a flip flop. Don't shoot. Flip flop. <laughs> And they're like, why are you wearing a skirt? Why are you soaking wet? I was like, I'm showering. This is how we do it in my in my world. <laughs> it was his idea. <laughs> so this was hard for us to do, at least I, hard I, for me. It was like pulling teeth. I, I lived in Vedasar's uh, ashram for a month back in 2000, in January 2000. And I remember it as being very beautiful there, you know, it was, but you would shower. You know, they had the hand pumps, you'd pump the water right yeah, out. And yeah. there was, you'd be showering there under a palm tree and there'd be like these Lungor monkeys like running by. <laughs> and it was like, yeah. it was, it was beautiful. Yeah. So then the photography, what, what happened after you graduated from the Guru Cool in a sense? Or I didn't graduate it. I, okay. they, they yeah, kind of like, to. Yeah, because uh, to get in the Guru Cool also, you, they check your charts. Like, uh, and I have a thing that I do not I have, a good because the thing is like, I don't know. The time of my birth. Um, so the astrological chart, there is two timings, and uh, so my 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 friends were like, just which whichever matches and it's a good good result, just take that one. <laughs> they told you the teachers. So my so based on the astrological chart, they will accept the kids. They don't accept ch students. Just this this is an amazing fact. Imagine that before you uh, want to get your kid into. A a, a college, a university, a private school, they say, yeah, maybe let's see their astrological chart first yeah. and they can get turned down according to their astrology. Yeah, so many kids would also get like, you know, they, you, you cannot because you're some scars, your astrological chart is something, you know. And then, uh, yeah, so um, I somehow then got in and then, uh, <laughs> but uh, my teacher always told me, um, because he saw that my mind couldn't be fixed in one place. And uh, he was just like, traveling is good for you and just travel. And then after three years, that's what I did. I started traveling. So I joined 24 hours Kirtan. In Vrindavan. Um, in Vrindavan, yeah. So now you go to the other important holy place in Golden Vrindavan. Yeah, so I went to Vrindavan. Mystical place. Yeah, I went to Vrindavan. I joined the ashram there. Uh, we used to do six hours Kirtan every day, six hours. Ah, Sometimes what I- What a my, job. Six hours of Kirtan. Yeah, sometimes every day. my friend would stay even like they would have, like generally you have three hours, three hours shift. Sometimes you do three hours shift in the morning, three hours in the evening. I know some friends they would do six hours straight sitting on one spot. What um, years were these? Um, 2011. 2011. And how old 12, are you? I think. I think that was eight. 17, 18. Was 18. Andrew Prabhu still with us at that point? He no. just passed away. No, he passed on 2010. I always wanted to meet him, but I never saw him. So the important sadhu. Yeah, I always wanted to see him. That yeah. 12, uh, 24 hour kirtan had just passed away. Then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I was waiting. He used to come every year to, to Mayapur, Mayapur for Gaur Punima, but that particular year he didn't come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I never got to see him, but I used to get his dreams and he used to instruct me um, always through my dreams. Wow. wow. Okay. So you were in, now you're really learning. I'm not that you weren't in Mayapur, but now you're getting a deep experience of Krishna Bhakti in Vrindavan, doing lots of kirtan, living in the temple. Yeah, and even when I was in Gurukul, like I used to do this Shilpi Shastra thing with my teacher, Dhrida Vratta. Oh, yeah, he's a wonderful artist. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Shilpa Shastra is sort of Vedic architecture. It's, it's, a, it's an art coming from a lineage from Vishwakarma. Vishwakarma is the demigod of architecture. So he has a lineage that uh, parampara that that he, they don't allow anybody else to learn. They have a lineage, they only teach it in that lineage. But my teacher somehow or other, he was blessed by one person who was in that lineage and he studied for nine years. He went to South India, he didn't speak English. His teacher didn't speak English, he was American, yeah. you know? And he stayed at his place for nine years and then he studied this art and then- That's uh, beautiful art. Yeah, yeah, so- But it's all precision, the, the measurements, the yes, symmetry. It's, yes. it's a, it's a, you just look at this art, you can feel the, the science that's in yeah. it. So, for example, uh, they like how in the Western measure, measurements they have inches. In uh, Vedic measurement, you have talas or angulums. Isn't that interesting? Different... That whole different type of measurement. And uh, yeah. like, the... who's? Why do we think we have every? Like everything, we got to think of everything. Like cultures before us, 
didn't have other measurements. I never, I always believed that other cultures had Different measurements. Types of measurements. So oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So like, to... we're so pushy with our measurements and it's a mile. Well, actually so like... the whole world is using kilometers now. Mile. <laughs> so like to carve a one Vishnu deity, um, like for example, one palm leaf, the, they can fold it in a certain way. When you open the palm leaf, you will get the whole All measurement the measurements. Of where the chest, the waist, the yeah. legs, the size of face, everything will be so perfect clever. in that one, one palm leaf. Fascinating. By the and, way, that, that, the teacher of his, if you want to follow him on Instagram, it's really beautiful. It's um, Dridha, D-R-D-H-A underscore art. D-R-D-H-A underscore art. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. So you learned this from him, this yeah. art. Yeah. And um, what is he Dutch or? No, he's American. He's American. American. Yeah, he's American. Oh, okay. I'm and he was also like, you know, growing up and he was very attached to Lord Narsingadev and art. And he was already an artist before, but then he got into like really spiritual and very unique. Like nobody can do anything like what he, yeah. uh, he comes up with and what he does. That's incredible. He's, and yeah. um, and so you learn this. And yeah. I know because you were teaching it to my kids. And yeah. the, the way they teach it is so incredible. You just repeat the same specific unique yeah. designs over and over yeah. until they just sort of stick. And yeah, it starts with the Patravali. It's like one leaf. And yeah. then from one leaf, it gets into details and details of leaves. And, and then it goes, and that leaves is just one part of a crown. And it's just, just like, like when you see these Vedic like temples, the, all the ornamentation, yes, yeah, ornamentation. the Vedic temples, the ornamentation, the Vedic temples or the pagodas and all the details of it. That yeah. This is all. So, yeah. So I was art. really like into the art. So, like my and just to would say, say that is this is this science by which the great temples, ancient temples of yes, India are built. Yes. With this. So, so any South India or any ancient temple you will see, they will be measured like that. And based on like, you know, for example, first it will come like the, the deities of the size. For example, if I'm a king, the king would come and say, okay, this is my angulum. Unless they'll be like, okay. So they will measure the king's angulum. So one angulum would be not one little inch. spaces on your fingers. So the, the... Everybody has a different finger size of the finger. So like this would be their one of the angular before their like, you know, knuckle, knuckle to knuckle. Yeah. So this will be the angle and everybody has a different size. So based on that measurement, they will get the measurement for the deity. And then from the deity is the door and the door and the temple and the door and the temple and then the dome, <laughs> the whole size yeah. comes like that. It's Beautiful. interesting. Like, but you when know. you walk into those temples, you feel, you feel yeah. the power of that yeah. science. Yeah. So now you've learned, now you know music, now you know storytelling, now you know drawing and art. Yeah. And then did that lead to photography somehow? Or what's the, what, what was next? I don't know how I got into it. I mean, you know, also there's so many people going through Mayapur internationally now that you start learning language, right? Yeah. I mean, what's your, what's your mother language? Maharati? No, it's Maithili. It's Mother Sita's uh, in my day. Like Mithila. Yeah. Mithila. Mithila, yeah. That's your native tongue. Uh, yeah. And uh, Sita's birthplace is like eight hours, like a little close. And also um, in my village, I have uh, artifacts of the temple. They, the Pandavas, they have come to that. That's why in the in the whole Bihar, my my only village is filled with devotees. Ramanandi devotees and Vaishnavas, the whole village is like filled with devotees. So if they have 24 hours Kirtan there, and, uh, you go back to this village. This is like your yeah. where your father came from. Yes. Yeah, my father and my yeah. Bihar. Yeah. yeah. Now you're telling me that village, the simple village life. You were sort of like in a romantic way. Like it was nice. Every day we go outside. We'd sit there, and someone would be telling the Ramayan or someone tell. Yeah, them. it was it was very because I I was growing. I grew up. At, I was born in city, so I I was like when in summer vacation we used to go to village, and uh, I used to see like six o'clock five thirty. All the elderly ladies who are widows or like just they're you know, they would wind up like they would sit and they they know that where they have the satsang and they would pull out this huge Ramayana and they would sing and chant and they would read these scriptures for one hour, two hours, three hours every day. And after that, they would have like a prasad with like a small sugar. Because you know, in village, in my village, there is still there is no currency. I don't know if they have now. There's no currency. There is no currency. Like you, if you it if trades, you have so. money, you're rich. We don't have money. So what do you do? You go to the shop, you take <laughs> grain like wheat or anything, one bag of wheat. So your quality of wheat, they will replace spice or anything for you. Wow. Even now, like if I don't have money, like I would just go give me, give them like a wheat or rice 
and uh, you can go to the shop and they will be they will have like all kinds of stuff. It's, it's and they such will another world. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't have electric electricity. I'm going to try that. Next time I go to New York, take a taxi. I was like, here you go, sir. <laughs> and here's a tip. Some Basmati yeah. rice. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and they, they didn't have electricity for like so many. Like just recently, they have electricity now. So it's. Yeah. So, so somehow your life has just been like following Krishna's indication. Yeah. Not really like never too concerned with figuring out what exact trade you would. I never had a plan. I still don't have a plan. Like we, I'm married and like I still don't have a plan. I'm always, I always tell my wife like, you know, Krishna has a plan for us. And we just, we, I just say it in Hindi like Ram Bharose. Ram Bharose is like, I'm surrendered to Ram and whatever. That's, Ram that's, that's care, your you plan. Know? Ram Bharose. Well, why don't we bring the wife on? Show now. Yeah, my prayer tree, come on. Come on. Yeah, we got to bring We're her on. Winding up the show here, but we... this is where the path led. The, the beautiful and talented, my prayer tree. My prayer tree. What can't this woman do? <laughs> she can sing. She can play cartels. She can dance. Like she put on a dance for us. We weren't even ready for it. We were like, oh, and she can dance on top of all of this. She is bubbling over with talent. And when I thought this guy was perfect. Now he's even more perfect. You make him more perfect. This is the more the most divine couple I've ever met. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank you so much for coming on the show. What a fascinating story. We yeah. didn't hear how you two guys got together. How did you ever? Yeah. Meet? How did you guys get together? <laughs> no, no. I meant you two. Oh, <laughs> oh me and him. Oh, I know. <laughs> it was love at first sight. I saw him across the parking lot. I, said, well, I looked into his forever. eyes. He looked into my eyes. I said, I know you from a previous life. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us. That'll be a whole nother show. Yeah. The union of Raghunath and Janeshwar. And you'll be the sequel. And then the, re the union of Maya Pareshri. <laughs> thanks for joining us. Thanks for that incredible story, man. <laughs> We're happy you're with us. We're happy you're both with us. These guys are team members now. I, oh, I've adopted them both. <laughs> She's my new daughter. He's my ongoing son. And I love having them around. It's so good for us to hear this story. Because the heights you've climbed in this very short life, it's as if you lived lifetimes and you've made every beautiful choice when you could have made a million bad choices. Prabhu, we're all so impressed. Howdy all. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We're here live, live, winding down our stay at the Govardhan Eco Village. Everybody, thanks for joining us on Zoom. It's Q&A day coming up this weekend. Wisdom of the Sages 108 at gmail.com. Email us, email Mara. If you want to get on the show, email that email address and she will give you the codes to get on Zoom live and join us live. It's fun. That's it. More adventures to come next week. Kostuba is going to Varkala, South India. I'm going to Goa and we're going to re-figure out when and where we're doing the show. Mara will keep you posted. It's a beautiful day for a beautiful day. Let the magic continue to flow and it's a big Harry Bowl. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow at the same time. Tomorrow's.